Well then, the Premier League kicks off in around about five hours from my watch right now. It is just about 12.40 a.m. Saturday morning, and Liverpool FC still have not had a signing whatsoever for this upcoming season. Absolute madness for a club like Liverpool FC to have come so close and yet so far last season. A new manager coming in, a new regime, so to speak, old heads, new heads, whatever, technically new. You would think that they would do whatever they can to benefit the new manager coming in. Normally, when a new manager arrives at a club, there are players going out as well as players going in. At the moment, we have more going out than going in, in which case we are running ourselves thin for no reason because we have not signed any players. Zubamendi was the one that was supposed to come in, didn't happen. Ergo, we're now in a very shit situation, but more so to the point, why was he the only person that was touted? Why was there no plan B or any secondary option to say, you know what, come to us, we'll give you X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. At least have a backup plan, so to speak. No backup plan, no nothing. Maybe won't even sign a sixth now because, well, Liverpool FC don't need a sixth. They've got all the midfielders that they want now. We're just going to make do. And it's like, no, no, we spent last season with the make do. Then we brought in Endo. And as good as he was for us last season, he ain't the man going forward. Slot has not played him in preseason. He has not featured in anything as far as I can tell. He played Gravenberch at the six. He played Soboslai at the six. I don't want to see McAllister there. I don't want to see Soboslai there. If Gravenberch is it, it's still a shit go. But he trusts Gravenberch more than McAllister. Not sure what's going on there. But you can't say this is his fault if something goes wrong against Ipswich uh, tomorrow night, shall we say or whenever it is when you're watching this. You can't blame Slot if a player gets injured and he has bare bones to bring in off the bench because they've been selling players and loaning players and not bringing anybody in. That is the problem. Now, a lot of Liverpool fans have said, you know what, we need three players. We need a DM, more importantly than ever, a DM, a recognized specialized DM at that. We need a centre-back, left-sided perhaps, maybe to cover for Van Dijk on the left-back position as well perhaps, and also an attacker. Some say we need a left wing midfielder. I don't know. We've got Diaz. We've got Nunez who can play there. We've also got Gakpo on the right side, though. If Salah's not there, that's where we have question marks. So I'm thinking maybe we need someone to come in on the right wing, or maybe we can rotate someone who normally plays on the left and bring them onto the right. I'm not exactly sure. Some argue striker, whatever. The point is, we need to sign players. Now, I have said that this squad is good, it is better than some squads out there. That was two weeks ago, or even a week ago, before these players started being sent out like they, they were not welcome anymore. Now, we've signed a couple of players out there. Obviously, we know that Carvalho is gone. Bobby Clark apparently is out the door as well. I think Kumas might have gone alone or something. They're talking about loaning out by Chetich for whatever reason. I don't know why the fuck they would want to do that. We need to keep players in Liverpool, not take them out of Liverpool, especially when no one's coming into Liverpool new. That's a big problem. But some men would have you believe that we don't need to make signings, that everything is okay, trust FSG, trust the management, trust Edwards and Hughes and everyone else in between, and that is Paul Mach, Mach, is that really Mach from Red Men TV, who says, do we really need signings? Do we really need to bring new players in there? We spent last year and the year before bringing in new attackers, new midfielders. People forget that. They have short memories. Okay, they filled out those positions. Three seasons running, we have gone for a DM and not signed a DM. That is a massive problem. Massive problem. Last year, we got away with it a little bit. We had so many injuries. He wants to say that, well, if the players can stay fit, we'll be better than last season. A bit more defensive structure, better coaching, we'll be better than last season. So he's already saying that Arna Slot can do a better job than what Klopp can. FSG will spend money when they need it to be spent. It needs to be spent now. I think what I think the fact does that it though does does it I, need to be spent? I think, yeah, I, think, I, 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 think I don't I don't know. Maybe yeah, people yeah. know. Maybe people will say they know. No did, and also they did try. We're now re trying to refresh the squad. And listen, mm -hmm. I, I, they've done really. Some we of spent the spent one hundred and fifty million pounds on midfielders in the last yeah. in the last two in the last two years. We spent another hundred million pounds, hundred and twenty million pounds on refreshing the attack the season before that. People have got short memories. No. I would suggest that, and I said this all along, and it's boring. I know I'm a fucking bore when I say this. If you can coach a better defensive structure and your young players improve and some of your best players stay a little bit fitter this season, Liverpool will be better than they were last year. Fingers crossed. Like say, we'll, uh... Yes, well, as you heard there, 
with a better defensive structure, with less injuries, if players can stay a little bit more fit, will be better than last season. My brother, this thing is not going to bode well when you don't have new players coming in, especially for positions you know you need. If Van Dijk gets injured, and we have a Canate, a Gomez, we have a Kwanzaa. That's three centre-backs. What else? What else you got there? We don't have Matip anymore. It's finished. We have to bring someone else in. We're going to bring someone from the academy back in there as well. Left back, Robertson, Simikas is there. Fine. They both got injured last season. Robertson had to play left back. Right back, we've got Trent for as long as he's going to be with us. I don't know what's happening there. We also got Bradley. Trent was injured. Bradley came in. Bradley had a knock. We had to make do. Gomez out on the right. Someone else went back on the left. The midfield has been an issue in the defensive aspects. Doesn't matter that we spend 100, 150 mil, whatever it is. We need a specific position field on the pitch. That is the main point. The forward line, whatever it is. People can say, I love Diaz, I love Nunez, I hate Diaz, I hate Nunez. I don't care. The, the players are there. Okay, as long as they're Liverpool players, I'll support them. I want them to do well. But for this man, and, and by the way, I didn't put it in, in the clip here, but someone mentioned about Arsenal spending money, and he went on this like monologue about how Arsenal have spent money, but they've spent trying to rebuild their team, whereas our team's been good. Bro, bro do you not remember the Hodgson days? The team we had under, under, under Rodgers as well in his last season was dog shit. Absolute dog shit. Klopp had to rebuild it from the start again, which is why we have the plays we have now, because he's rebuilt it. But even like Sir Alex Ferguson, he would at least get a couple of plays every season, refresh. One player goes, two players come in. Two players go, two players come in. Something to that effect. Never had the same squad every year, year in, year out, as far as I remember, as far as I've been told, as far as I can remember what he was like. He always bought one or two players in because he knew you had to keep the squad going. Fresher players, fresh ideas, new ways of playing. P players bring their own skill set. I don't think that's a wild concept to understand. But like when Endo says, yeah, we need a DM. When Arna Slot even says, I anticipate more signings before the window ends. When your captain, Van Dyke is telling you bluntly, we need to make signings. Does that not tell you that you need to spend money? What is this bullshit of do we really need to spend money? I don't know. Some people maybe know. I don't know if we need to spend money. And then to say that if the players stay fit, everything's going to be all fine and dandy and roses and shit like that. We damn know well players are not going to stay fit the whole season. Okay? I'd love for our players to stay fit. But even then, if even if our players are fit, still, other teams are strengthening. They're buying new players. They're, they're getting positions filled. We're not. That's the problem. That is the issue here. Just because we have a nice starting 11, a couple of players off the bench, we have a decent squad, a good squad. I don't think it's enough to compete on all fronts to win everything there is to win. We may be finishing the top four. We may be finished with a cup or something like that. But if you want the big trophies, you want to finish first in the Premier League. You want the Champions League. You want to go all the, all the way. You want to go the full distance. You need to get players in here. What the fuck is this man on about? I know Hussam did a stream as well. Hussam had an almighty rant. I caught like five minutes of it. I was out before. I haven't listened to it properly. But I know he spoke about a similar thing as well. It's like, we don't need to spend money. Bro, everyone knows we need to spend money. We're the only Premier League club that has not spent anyone. Ipswich Town bought two players in the space of a day. Whatever the hell it was. Brentford have bought players. They brought one off us. They bought Cavalio. We sold to him. We haven't replaced him. Oh, we've got... Diaz, and we've got Gakpa on the left wing. Okay, but we still need more players. We need more players to fill positions. Who's going to be a striker? Jota? Okay, what if he gets injured? Nunez. Nunez hits more crossbars than he gets goals. As much as it pains me to say. That's what he does. That's a problem. But these men want to tell you that they're being all positive and shit like that. Now, if you actually want to think that this is me just being negative or whatever, let me show you across to the actual video here. And this is the video on Redman TV. And I even had to tweet it out as well. It says, quote, if you can coach a bit of defensive structure and your young players improve and some of your best academy players stay a little bit fit this season, Liverpool will be better than they were last year. Bro, fingers crossed. And I said, now we're hopeful for the players that we had last season to not be injured and play better under slot. This would mean an even better season than 1920, which I don't think is likely. And a lot of people are calling out the bullshit, the positivity, running defense for FSG. Why is this? Well, I'll get to that in a minute in my final say-so here, why I believe that is. 
but it says he, if Hicks and Gillett gave Paul an interview, he'd be defending them. I understand positivity, but the degree of which seems to be that delusional positivity at this point is worse than just valid criticism. Borderline tr living in denial, trying to cope. VVD literally said in the media, we need signings. So I'm not sure how Paul thinks we don't. The club has been embarrassed, whether you feel that or not. There's another comment here. How will Mach rate this? Uh, Mach uh, rate this transfer window if we sign no one? I bet he g doesn't give it a zero. He'll still spin it into a six out of ten somehow. Uh, we haven't even re-signed our players. We have not re-signed Trent. We have not re-signed Salah. We have not re-signed Van Dyke. We have not re-signed Allison. And we're looking to get a goalkeeper for Allison coming now. Coming in, he's going to go on loan. Allison's last year, maybe we don't even know what the hell's happening there. We've got body doubles doing videos and shit at Anfield for Trent. Who the fuck knows what is happening at the moment at this club of ours? Absolutely insane. And he also said this. He says, I, I can live with us not getting or buying players. If your bar is set that low, then you can't be disappointed, which is absolute bullshit. I mean, Liverpool, we're going for a quadruple two, three years ago. Now we don't need to make signings because we've got a good squad already. Bro, the players are a year older. Van Dijk is a year older. Salah is a year older. The only player who's actually you know getting better at the moment would be Trent. And you can argue Allison perhaps. Yes, we bought midfielders in. Yes, we brought some forwards in. Defense needs fixing. Defensive midfield definitely needs fixing. What is this bullshit, man? Absolute bullshit. Trying to be positive and nice, but very difficult to think this team could challenge for the title and stay in the same position is a big ask. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It is absolutely insane. There's one more thing I wanted to check out here. This tweet. They were talking about, it was uh, Steve Hall and uh, Paul Gorst talking about the fallout after LFC suffered the, the blow in the transfer with Richard Hughes, with the failure, with the Zubamendi deal. And a lot of people were questioning, like, okay, hang on, you have one job and that is to sign players. How do you not sign one player? This is the issue. This is the problem. How do you not sign one player in a span of two fucking months and you, you wait till August and then put the bid in and then it all falls to bits in a space of a couple of days, three, four days before a season is meant to begin? How do you let that happen? And a lot of people are saying, look, and I'll say it as well, going after him personally or whatever, shit like that, not cool. We're not here to go at them personally. We're looking at their professional level, at their job level. Bro, he had two months to make something happen. He waits till August because Arna Slot had to assess the team. Even let's say that's true. Let's say he had to assess his team when all his players were back. As if you're not doing some background work and checking to see what players are available for positions you know you need to fill. We know for three seasons we've needed a DM. And now they tell us, well, we've got players who can play in the midfield in the DM, so we don't really need one. Trey Nioni, 17-year-old. Bro, what the fuck are you guys on about, man? Anyways, some of the comments here. It says, he had since June to plan and execute and sign someone of worth. Even the goalkeeper situation dragged on, so we have to assume his approach is one that delays and, and is cautious. We missed out on so many opportunistic signings, almost as if he's scared to spend any money. Yes, because you get judged quite quickly if you're at a big club like Liverpool. Obviously, him coming from Bournemouth. Um, I think it's right. Criticism should be aimed at him and also Michael Edwards and co. Abs criticism is absolutely fine. Attacking the man because the lad changed his mind is a joke. It's not because the lad changed the, uh, he changed his mind. There was one here. He's done nothing all summer apart from <laughs> scratch his ass. Don't know about that. Attacking because there's no plan B. Last year we had no plan C and got Endo. This has been top priority for three years and still no number six. That is the major point here. That is what a lot of Liverpool fa fans are saying. We know we need this player in this position. A centre-back, a forward on the right side, left side, whatever. I don't care. A forward still to cover some positions. This is the problem. This is the problem. I like Steve. He loves transfers, so he must be fuming with them. Unlike Machen, who's the general, uh, excuse the general. Absolutely insane. Even their own fans and people are calling him out. They are calling him out indeed. You saw some comments on YouTube. It's 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 peak. It is absolutely peak. And and look, I know this has gone on for a little bit too long than what I expected. But, bro, when you've got big channels like Redman TV and others being positive and saying, oh, we don't need to sign players. We've got a good squad. They'll stay fit, etc., etc. You know damn well some players are going to get injured. He wants to say Arsenal don't have better players than Liverpool, but they're playing better than us because they're finishing in second position. Their players have not been injured. Yes, maybe we have better players one for one, but as it stands, they're the team that is above us. We want to get above them. We want to get above City. We're not going to do that with the same players from last year. We need more players in this fucking squad. Make it better. Not, yeah, we have a great team. Let's run with it like on a slot now. Yeah, we're just going to leave it as is. Everything is good and, and you know, I got a quality team and it's hard to bring players in there. That also sounds like PR spin as well. 
Now, as I said, why do I think that they're positive and doing all this spin and everything else in between? Why are they doing the whole top red act? Well, when you get afforded interviews with Jurgen Klopp that you put behind the paywall, when you get afforded interviews with players, when you get to go to the farewell, when you have all these other nice things you get with the club, you sort of have to play ball with the club. You can't be as open and honest as you once were, which is why a lot of people say when fan channels end up working with the club itself, they all start to disappear and they actually stop being critical. Like people say Goldbridge was a bit the same. He started getting interviews with the club with Manchester United and then he'd also have um, interviews with players and things like that. And in his tune change with um, Ten Hag, oh, we have to back Ten Hag, it is what it is. Oh, any of us have to do this. He'll still complain about signings and shit like that, but he's not as rough as he is with the manager and players, etc., as he once was. People like to say that that is because of his connections with the club now. Same with these guys. Same with every other fan base that has a fan channel. You get linked with the club, they're going to tell you, you want access, you have to agree to our thing. Not always, not all the time, but in general, even like here in Australia, like I follow an A-League team. I had, I was a part, I had, I was a part of a podcast with a whole bunch of other people and we tried to make nice with the club and everything else like that in between. We weren't begging, but we're like, you know what? Let us talk to a player. Nah, you guys are negative. You guys are this, you guys are that. It's like, well, yes, we're fans. We're not here to say, oh, fantastic. Oh, we lost 3-0. Oh, but we played so well. Oh, but we gave it all our best. We don't do that shit. We want our team to win. We want our team to succeed, which is why we want to have these signings. We want more players in so we are better squad. Just because we have all our players fit again from last season because we did so well, even with our injured period, that doesn't mean it's going to transpire into something this coming season. City will be a little bit... Well, City have added players, not so much, but they're still Manchester City. So until we see what happens with their charges, they're still Man City. Arsenal added a couple of players that have problem positions in. They might improve. Chelsea are buying players. They're buying a fucking army for the next couple of years. They might improve. Manchester United bought players to replace dud players in players in positions they know they needed to fix. They're going to do something this season, perhaps. Maybe not top four, but they should surely be better than what they were last season, even though Ten Hag is still there. But to go back to the point, when you have connections with the club, things have to be a little bit more rosier on your part. You have to toe the line. You have to be positive. You can't do the negative aspect. As much as you want to, you've got to remember, if you want to have the connections and you want all the little extras and all that good stuff, you have to play nice with the club that is allowing it. Make some fucking signings. Bring the players in here. Let's make Liverpool FC. Liverpool FC. We're six-time fucking Champions League winners, for fuck's sakes. 19 Premier League titles, all the FA Cups, everything else, and the rest. Why the fuck are we not signing anybody? Why is it so fucking hard to sign players? And why are some people saying we don't need to sign players? It's all good. It ain't all good.